watching The Jenny Lynn Show, and I'm Jenny Lynn Glead, your host. Once again, I have another fascinating guest to share with you. This one is with a international television station from Spain, and he's also, um, he was Mexico's national tennis player. And I was given the privilege of meeting them and they consented to come on this show to tell us all about their company, Vavo, which is the name of their TV um, company that they have in Spain. Alan? Hey, how are you doing? Alan Nunes is his name. How did I forget to say your name? How are thank you, you for coming on the show. No, first off, thank you so much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here, you know, and be with this audience. That is, that is really interesting for us. So you are the COO of Vavo? Yes, I am. Tell us about Babel. Well, Babel started uh, in, in 2008. You know, it started as a move, as a, I would say, as a movement of, of journalism back in Spain when the bubble bu burst. And then our CEO, Javier Robles, he basically uh, couldn't find a job. He locked himself inside his room because it was the only way to start off a platform. He learned how to code and he just took advantage of, you know, uh, the beginning of the digital era for media companies. And we started like that. And currently, from 2008 to 2017, we are in 14 countries. We are a um, sports uh, media company that writes in five different languages. And well, I'm here. <laughs> that's, that's a brief summary of, of what we are. So you guys are in 14 different countries. Yes. And what type of coverage do you guys do? What do you cover? Well, we basically uh, started covering sports, and that's what I would say 90% what we do, but also we cover other different stories like politics, you know, music, entertainment in some of the countries. So I would say it's basically sport. Why would anybody watch your station when mainstream media covers so much of the sports? Like Fox, CNN, CBC, ABC, they all cover sports. Competition stuff, not only here, you know, but in other countries, like in Spain, in Mexico, in Brazil, everywhere that we are, it's tough. But I think that people, uh, they got into the point where they already uh, have a lot of media companies that they say the same. They just cover whoever's winning, you know, the, the, the big teams, the big players, and they don't really give a voice to anyone else that is not in the big market. So I think that what we have learned is that you know, sports is not only about who wins the first place, it's also about the whole other teams who, who are trying also to be the best. And I think that it's really unfair that in some countries, for example, there's just one main sport. Uh, in, in all Latin American countries, that's the way it is. So if, for example, you're one of the best baseball players in Mexico, sometimes uh, mainstream media, don't, the companies, they don't really talk about you. So that's what I think that we do, that people have liked a lot, and that we just think that's, that's something that we bring to, to people. So that, you know, that's a really good point because I'm not a sport fanatic. Yeah. But every now and again I'm with people or I'm in a place where a game is on. And I've watched the media, you know, the winning team, they all just surround them. They just pounce on them. And then the winners that you just watch giving it, the, I mean, the losers, the team that have lost, even though they've worked so hard and played so hard, it's like they just disappear into oblivion. You don't hardly ever see them anymore. Yeah. So is that why you guys also give them a voice? Because that's what I hear you say. Yes, I mean, I think that everyone that is in the company, they have, we all have lived it in one way or another. For example, I understand it perfectly because, you know, as mentioned, my uh, sports background when I played uh, tennis and I was, an intern I was a national member uh, for, for, the, for Mexico's team. Then I would get to the point where I would win a tournament, some, I would do something that I consider really important, and it was considered important in the tennis world. And in Mexico, it didn't have any relevance because I was not a soccer player. So we, we think that it gets to those unjust you know, moments for a lot of athletes in different countries. And that's why we think that what we do has been different, and it's uh, getting a lot of traction from a lot of people because they just don't not like uh, and a specific sport and a specific team, they, they like something else. And I, I think that's what, that's what we do. And of course, with uh, what we consider a really high quality journalism. Yes, I agree with you. And, I, and I'm from a third world country, so I get it. Soccer and cricket got all the coverage. Yes. It's like the other games didn't really exist ex except in someone's backyard or on a Friday you play and they got no publicity. Yes. So your television station is focused on all the different sports yes. that people play in the various countries. Yes. 
So how large is the company, your television company? Well, right now we started we started TV, for example, in Mexico, and we're not just focusing on TV. We're, we're right now basing a lot in sports written content. So I would say we have a network of 1,100 people everywhere in the world, and we're producing uh, more than 12,000 um, articles, I would say content, uh, media, actually media platform uh, content. So we're producing a lot of a lot of things in all those countries because you know, as we think, as we say, we, we don't really think that there's just one sport or something that you have to focus on. I think that journalism is something broader than just focusing on something really specific. So you play tennis in Mexico. You were a national player. Yes. And you said nobody covered you. Well, yeah, that happened. That happened quite a lot, uh, and I think that's why I, I see it with other eyes. You know, like yeah. I, I lived that myself, and I saw how hard it was in a way because you didn't get the the coverage that you as an athlete are expecting because you're doing the same effort as any other athlete, mm -hmm. and it, it gets to to a point where you're like, mm, what, what's really happening? You know, with media in some countries, <laughs> and not only Mexico. You know, in basically all the countries. Yes. Here in the United States, it's a little bit different because there's uh, more diversity on what type of coverage they have for uh, MLB, NFL, you know, uh, NHL, MLS, even, you know, but where we're from, basically, I'm from Mexico, and it's it's only soccer, and in Spain, it's only soccer, and Brazil is the same, so that it's really tough. Well, what part of Mexico are you from? I'm from Puebla, which is uh, one of the biggest cities of the country, and it's in the central part, so two hours away from Mexico City. And you were that close to the city and your tennis? Tennis is a big sport in most countries. Yes, it's really popular in Mexico. It was really popular in the 80s, 90s, and then we had a downfall, you know, in, in the kind of uh, tennis players that we had, the level that they, uh, they, they played. But right now it's trying to get big again, but it, it's gonna take a lot of time again. Well, with you and television now, that tennis player is definitely going to get coverage, right? Well, yes, that's what we're doing, and that's why we're supporting a lot of uh, young athletes who are performing, who are going to international competitions, and they're actually having uh, quite some achievements. How do you guys get into, I saw that you were in Russia, you guys covered, and you're going to another big game in Russia, aren't you? Yes, yes, uh, this year we were lucky enough that uh, FIFA consider us as a media platform to go and cover the, the Confederations Cup, which is the biggest tournament the year before the World Cup, and now we're all aiming, you know, and trying to do the best to, to get to Russia for the World Cup, which, as you know, basically anywhere in the world, it's the most important event uh, every four years, you know, uh, as well as the Olympic Games. How successful have you been so far? I think that we did a pretty good job uh, in the Confederations Cup. We had a really good content, really nice interviews. We were uh, basically covering all the games, and that's why we think that we have a great chance to be right now in the World Cup. So we're going to be uh, working along ESPN, FS1, basically all the big networks. We're uh, doing it next to them. You don't feel any type of competition when you're with these networks, do you? Because it's such a doggy dog world. All the reporters want to get the best story. And in the United States, we hear so much about fake news. Yeah, Do I think people ever look at you guys because you're so small and question the, the quality of your, rep not the quality, but the fact? No, that they, have, they have also questioned the, the, the quality at the beginning. And I think it's like, you know, in any type of job, any type of industry, at the beginning, you have to prove yourself. But then after that, there have been a lot of big media groups that are starting, uh, started to see what we're doing and they're, they're, uh, they, they know what we're capable of. And so I don't think it's a pressure. Actually, I think it's motivating, you know, that we started from basically inside our news, uh, inside our room in Spain. And right now we're fighting to be at a really important media company, not only in Spain, not only in the United States, but everywhere in the world. So when you, you guys have been doing this for eight years, you said? Yes, yes, our CEO started off in 2009. And how many p followers do you have? Do you have a way to track that? Well, we have 40 million visitors per year. Uh, that's just the traffic that we get into the site. And then we have a social media platform, which means, you know, Facebook and Twitter of more than 2 million people. So that would say 42 million would be a good number for each year, the traction that we have. And for people in the U.S., where would they find you guys? Just by going to your website? Yes, if they just type uh, Babel.com, they're going to get uh, the menu when they can choose what edition, you know, which country they want to get the news from. So if they want to get all the information from the U.S., they just click on the United States flag and that's going to direct them to the website with all the news from this country. And you said that you, um, you don't only cover the news. Tell us what else, I mean the sports. What else are you guys planning to do or 
are doing at the moment? For example, right now in Mexico and in Spain, we start off a digital newsroom for politics, for music, for entertainment. So, for example, this summer we were covering uh, one of the most important movie and uh, movie um, films. Um, uh, carnival or festival, I don't know what the word is used here in Malaga. Carnival? It's festival, right? Movie festival, that's where, like Canes. So oh, they yeah, have yeah, yeah. Kind of like Canes, but they have it in Malaga, so we were there and we had complete access to, to all the events. So I would say between those three things, that we're, that's what we want to focus after uh, we manage to get the whole coverage of sports everywhere in the world. So when do you want to get to like Cannes or the film festival or you want to get to the games? Do you write to an organization and say, we are a news platform and we would like to come and get some coverage? Is that how you do it? And then they write back and say yes or no? Well, how does it work? It basically works uh, this way. Uh, for example, with FIFA, you know, the uh, ruling uh, body for, uh, for soccer, you just yeah. send them your presentation, they want to see the traction, how many people follow you, how relevant you are, and then they give you an answer. So after you get those kind of uh, yes or authorization from those type of affiliations, then basically everything else is really easy. Right now, I wouldn't, s I could say that all the uh, leagues in the world and all the federations, they, they know who we are, so we don't have any problem getting in anywhere. That's really awesome for yeah. just for just being two guys who started this in eight years ago. Yes. There's hope for those of us at KMVT. <laughs> I think it's I'm really happy for you because I, you. I love I love doing what you do as well I mean clearly we only do this here at the community television station but you're you have youth you're youthful yes so you have time you know um, on your side and you clearly are determined and enjoy doing this and you're tenacious so tell us what is the goal for your television media company from here going forward from from here going forward right now is to start I would say conquering the market in the US getting into every city everywhere into every sport here in the United States and then after we uh, prove that the business model and the media model that we have proved in other countries can work here then we're gonna head off to uh, Asia probably China or Japan because that's the next big market that we want to get to that's really ambitious I really admire the courage you know and the determination and the the vision that you Thank guys you. have because you're, you, you have ESPN, these are old companies, so they're, they're huge conglomerates and it's yes. just the two of you. Yes, it's been, it's been tough. Uh, I don't want to lie, there have been honestly really tough moments because as you said, there are sharks, you know, out there and <laughs> you just <laughs> like small the fish, sharks, but yeah. then uh, work talks for itself and I'm really glad that we have been able to prove ourselves and they all know who we are now, so we're just trying to, to get somewhere, you know, to the next level, I would say. You've come from a media background, right? You told me that your father has his own media company. Yes, my father started off his uh, media company that right now it's, it's pretty big in Mexico, but it has nothing to do with us. But from there, you know, since I was little, instead of going to, I don't know, on a Sunday to the circus or to the zoo, I would just go with him to the newsroom and he would like teach me how to read, uh, how to write, sorry. And then, you know, all, all the concepts from the media. So since I was little, I, I've always been really, you know, involved in this. So since you were little, this was, you knew that you loved, you were passionate about this as well as tennis. Yes. Are you passionate about tennis still or is this your thing now? That's a, that's a really tough question. Uh, I think that sometimes one, you know, one week I really love tennis, the other week I really love uh, media industry, but I think yeah. that at the end I feel more valuable being here because when you're playing tennis, you can be making money, you can be winning, but you just win for yourself, you know, at the end you're just hitting a fussy tennis yellow ball around the world and you don't really impact as many lives as I think that I can impact them in the media industry. So I think right now I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards this more than tennis. But why can't you do both? Because if you really want to do it, it's really demanding. For example, tennis, you, it, it's a 24-7 uh, job. You got to be traveling all over the world every week, 30 weeks out of the year you have to be traveling. And at the same time, if you really want to be successful in the media industry, you cannot leave the newsroom, you know. The moment now that you leave uh, your phone in the table, something can happen, breaking news are happening. And with this world being so quick now with social <laughs> yes. media, it's, it, it gets to a point where, you know, even my girlfriend, she's like, okay, like, what's going on now? You know, you got to stop for a second. So, so it's, it's really demanding. And you are the one who goes out to get the stories when this is happening. You're the person who, is it just you or does your CEO go as well? 
Well, start coverage. it depends on basically uh, what the month is, what the event is. So, for example, when there's just domestic league um, events going on, we send out the people that we trust, that they're working with us, collaborators, people from universities that they want to get a chance. So we send them, we we send them to the events. We teach them how to how to do this. But when the big events are happening, for example, World Cup. Uh, I, I will go, you know, so it's, it, it kind of varies depending on, on what the context is. That's really awesome. And uh, you live in the United States, although you're from Mexico, yes. right? Where do you live? I am based in New York, in the Big Apple. Aha. Uh -huh. You're an apple seed. Basically, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and your CEO, where is he based? He's based off in, in Madrid, in Spain, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where the headquarters are. Okay, so those headquarters for Vavil is in, yes. in Madrid. Yes, they're in Madrid. How about the other countries? Because if it's just you and him and you guys want to get the international news, how do you do that with two of you um, That's a really good question. to cover the whole world? So basically what we think we have done is we have disrupted the concept of uh, traditional newsroom in order to produce news. Yes. So basically we don't have... Uh, a set headquarter in every country where we are. We just have independent uh, digital offices where we manage everything from. Right. So like here in the TV set, you would have all the organization and all the planning. We have that just on the web. So we don't really need right now to have a headquarters in every country where we are. Of course, we do for some specific things, but it's not that all the people go to those newsrooms, you know? They yes. just work from their home and we have all the coordination there. So just imagine how our phone is, you know, going off every second. <laughs> So I was introduced to you guys by someone who thought, since I do this and you do that, there's synergy yes. and we should meet and we're doing this show now. Why are you here in the Silicon Valley? Well, I'm here in the Silicon Valley because uh, there is this uh, Spain um, government thing that they're doing, which is called the Spain Tech Center. So basically they bring uh, companies that the Spanish government think that they can become something really big. So they bring in over here and they set up meetings with VCs and with angel uh, investors, with seed investors, you know. So we just, we, we came here to, to see that and to start talking with people, networking and let them know what we're doing. So that's why we're here. What kind of reaction are you getting from the people you've met with? Well, actually, we're, we're pretty surprised, you know, because we, we all know that the media industry is basically here tough. in the United States is really tough. But at the same time, we've gotten really important feedback saying like, oh, wow, you guys really did this with basically no money, just with your your gut, you know, your your effort and all the hard work. So they were really impressed. And right now we're, we're talking to, to some people because they're, they're interested and we just will have to see, you know, what's the best for the company, what's the best for what we want as the vision of the company to not go, you know, left to right, but just keep going straight the way we want it. So that, that's what's happening right now. So there is a company in Spain that you can enter your, your ideas or your organization and then they judge you. And so how many companies did you guys win out on? Well, that's, that, that's, that's, imp <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how to answer to that one, but there, there have been a lot, yes. And are you two the only two people here trying to get money, or are there other companies from Spain here with you? Well, there are other companies, but they're, they're different, uh, for different, uh, sectors, you know, so one of them is for, uh, aviation, the other one is a startup for tech, so, but for media companies, we're the only ones here, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Are a lot of people telling you that? Pretty soon people are going to be reading all the news on the internet. Are you getting a lot of that from VCs? Yes, yes. Here in the, here in the, in the Valley, what we're getting a lot is, you know, as you know, investment in tech, but they're also really interested in know how the tech is going to apply into media because that's the future, you know, and as we all know, print is going down, TV in a way is also going down, and just the digital is the new, uh, that, that's the future of, of, of things. So they know that it, that's the way it's going to go. They're just trying to figure out which one is the best way to apply technology into this sector. Mm -hmm. And what is your, so what is your cutting edge um, selling point? Why would anybody want to invest in your company? Can you, are you allowed to say that? Yes. I'm asking you because if a VC is watching, he can be like, hey, you know, I like what I heard. I'm going to contact these guys. So that's what I'm asking you. Well, yes, what I mean, of course we can say What do you bring to the table We've why they would want to invest? I think that we bring to the table the fact that our journalism is not clickbaiting, it's not fake news, and we produce a specific content for each niche market, and that's something that most uh, sports media companies cannot tell you. So if you're a fan of 
uh, the NICs, you're going to have content specifically of the NICs. Mm -hmm. If you love something related to MLS, it's going to be the same thing. And that just not only applies here to the US, that applies to the 14 countries where we are. So a lot of people are interested in just in what they want to read. And if they're not a big team, if they're not something important, they don't really have any uh, diffusion for from from the media. So that's what we do. And that's uh, why we think that with no clickbaiting, with no fake news, plus this specific coverage, that's why people uh, have really followed what we do. And what kind of competition do you have in Europe? Whew, in Europe, we have s so many competitors. We Are you serious? Yes, it's, it's, it's crazy. I would say that even more than here in, in some ways. That is surprising to me, really. Yes, yes. Oh, wow, because, you know, in the U.S., there's so many media organizations. Yes, all the big fish are there. But the, the thing in Europe is that even though, the, of course, there are smaller countries than the United States, they all have a relationship between them, you know, European Union. So maybe someone that owns a big newspaper in Spain, they also own one in Italy. So they're coping the market. And then it's really tough to get into those markets in the revenue um, streamline. But that's what we've been doing. That's why when we come here, it took us eight years to work really hard every day, uh, no holiday days, nothing. But the fact to be here in the Valley now talking to VCs and that you can see the reaction that they have from a media company that is not made here, but it's coming from the from uh, from uh, from another country, you know, from Spain. It's it's really honestly, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, I'm really, really impressed. And it tells me that you guys have really put your heads together and come up with some great ideas that are probably unique to your company. Yes. Which, of course, is what you need to do in order to keep up with the sharks, as I call them. Yes, and right now, of course, we already have the traction of all the million of millions of people that follow us, but we just don't want to be a normal media company. So we have a project, that's the one that we're presenting to the VCs, where we want to evolve what the media concept means. So it's just not, it's not only going to be reading news, but it's going to be uh, databases, big data. It's going to be uh, global newspapers archive. It's going to be making one of the first um, systems to buy advertising uh, on, on site and really fast, you know, something that is completely different to what the traditional market has now. So that's what we want to do. And that's why we're here. Do you do you feel like you have a stronger presence in some co countries like in Mexico because you are from Mexico? Yes, and I would imagine you know lots of people in Mexico and have lots of connections there. Yes. Do you find that having that is helping you to be stronger in those countries than for example the US where you are new to this country? Yes, I think that for example it, it all started off in Spain and then after we had the presence in Spain then it was easier to go to Mexico because we said hey look now Spain is working this is what we're doing, so we already have a backup, you know? And then you add not only Mexico, but you add Brazil. So at the end, you end up 10 countries, and that's why we think it's the perfect moment to come into the U.S., because we have seen that, hey, it not only works two countries, it's working in so many other places, and this is like the last, you know, uh, the last test for us, the United States, and then after it works here, as I mentioned before, then we wanna go to the Asian market. So how do you guys make money? Well, right now, as you know, as any media uh, platform that is available in the internet is by sponsorships, by having digital advertising. But as you know, Facebook and Google, they're a really tough competitor. <laughs> they're taking they're taking everything. Basically, they take a huge percentage. They have a big cut. So that's why we're we, we're developing this uh, parallel business models that I was mentioning before. So we're not only dependent on what we bring in from revenue, but you know, to also give other tools to the to the society, so they can be like, hey, these are, these guys are not only living because of uh, advertising, but they're doing these things. So I think that's what is going to be the um, the difference between us and the other uh, media companies that they're just going to keep doing news. Well, I'm not going to ask you what those other things are because I don't want anybody to steal your idea. No, no, no. It's, it's, they're secret. <laughs> but but I am going to trust that those other things are pretty competitive. We're already working on them. It's not like something that we're imagining that mm -hmm. it might happen. Mm -hmm. They're really developed now, so we're just looking to finish them and then attack the market because uh, we know that this is the moment. You know, World Cup is ahead of us six months uh, from now on in June, and we think that is the perfect moment to say to all the world, hey, this is, this is Babel and you, you guys should know us. Awesome. Well, I'm really, really impressed, seriously, because it's just two of you. 
Yes, that's and how you're started. in New York and he's in Spain and yet you've managed to, and all the other people are like contractors. Yes, yes, uh, some of them are freelancing, most of them are collaborators that they haven't had an opportunity, they haven't had a voice. And right now you only see the two of us, but behind us we have a huge team that they have been really, really important and really supportive and without them, it would only be the two of us, you know, but with them, we're we're thousands and we have proved that it, things can things can be different in the media world. Well, we're out of, the show is almost over, believe it or not. That was that so went pretty that went, that, that went really quick. <laughs> before we wrap, what do you want to leave with the viewers that I didn't ask you? I always ask this. Well, I just want to tell the viewers that, of course, they, they should look into us. But I think the message behind it is as long as you have a, an idea, as long as you pursue it, you shouldn't let anyone else's opinion become your own reality. So just work as hard as you Great. can. Great, I like that. And then things are gonna come your way. Well, I thank you so much. Thank you, Jenny, for the invitation. Alan, it's been a pleasure. Coming. Sure, you know, I, the goal of my show is to encourage people, regardless of their socioeconomic backgrounds, to choose the best life, that everybody can make something wonderful of their life. And this is a great example of that. And I like what you said, don't tell people your dreams because they'll always tell you all the reasons why you can't do it. Yes. And that's what I've experienced in my life, so I hardly ever tell people what I'm doing no, until true, I've done true, it. Totally true. Yes. So I always hope that if when I produce these shows, it changes one life, it's worth the time. And I thank you again for taking no, time. Thank you for the I invitation. wish you guys luck. Thank you. I think you're gonna do great. I like your attitude. And thank you for watching the Jenny Lynn show. And maybe you can, uh, you've learned something from Alan that you can apply to your dream and make it happen. Thank you so much again. Thank you, Jenny. And thank you to my crew. They're awesome. This is last minute. You guys rock. And happy holidays, because I don't think I'm doing it.